Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So, in today's video, we're gonna be doing a bit of a different video, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing a catfish tour. Now, this is gonna be a video just on the catfish in the fish room. This is gonna be about the plecos, the quarries, and the whiptails. I've made fish room tours in the past where I've shown everything in the fish room, and I thought today, we'd just focus on the catfish in the fish room, because I do keep a lot of angelfish and rams and discus and stuff like that, but today I thought I'd just focus on the catfish, and we'd talk about some of the things I got going on with them and some of my future breeding projects, hopefully. And yeah, I'll just show you guys some of the stuff that I've been picking up because part of having a lot of fish is that sometimes I can't update you guys with all the fish that I've got. So I've got a few things that you guys might not know I have. And I thought I'd just show you guys some of those fish in this video. So without any further ado, let's flip around the camera and have a look. Okay, so I think we're just gonna go through each tank as I come through the fish room and have a look at what kind of catfish we've got in those tanks. And I think I'm just gonna to stick to like the brood stock. I'm not gonna show you guys all of the grow outs and stuff like that because it's not really necessary. And I'm just gonna show you guys some of the cool stuff that we got in the fish room. So we're not gonna cover every single catfish in this video, but I think we'll start over on this side of the fish room and have a look at some of the cool whip tails that we got over here. So this is a four foot tank and this is a temporary holding tank for a few fish. And in this tank we have some long nose whip tails and we have some L333 plecos. Now the plecos are just in here temporarily until they find a new home to be housed in. You can see one of these guys here in the middle of the screen. So this is the white variant and then you can see as well there's some fins of some of the yellow variants in here. Now, these guys I've been holding on to for about a year and they've grown quite a bit and I'm holding on to these guys probably until next year when they start to breed. So I'm keen to see how they go. They've been really easy to take care of actually. They're a very hardy pleco and probably not one of my favorites. I've just got these guys because they're a pretty common one and I'd like to be producing these guys when I get all my plecos up and running. Now, something that I find pretty cool are these guys. So these guys kind of look pretty freaky. And these are the first whip tails that I picked up. Now, since I picked these guys up, I've absolutely fallen in love with whip tails. I got these guys as little young'uns, and these are the long nose whip tails. Now, the reason I kind of like these guys is first of all, because they're such an oddball fish, but the other thing too is they look like little mini sturgeon. So these guys are about, I'd say 20 centimeters long at this point. So they've been growing quite a bit. I'd like to describe these guys as like long bristle nose, except they eat a little bit of meat here and there. So. What I'm feeding these guys is I'm feeding carnivore pellets in this tank and I'm also feeding zucchini and green beans and stuff like that. And the plecos seem to do all right with it, but they're only in here temporarily, so that's why I've got the carnivore pellets. But these guys absolutely love green beans, they love zucchini, and they love a lot of that veg matter. And on occasion, they do like some of that more intensive carnivore diet stuff. So we've got one of them here. We've got another two down here. I'm not too sure as to the sexes of the, I'm not too sure as to the sexes of these guys. I'm not too sure whether they're gonna start breeding soon or whatnot. I think that the males do get little bristles on the side of them and the females don't. So none of these guys have bristles yet and I've only got five of them. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we do have mixed sexes. You can see another one up here on the outlet and then there's another one behind him. So these are a really, really cool fish. I'm a big fan of these long nose whip tails, but definitely not the coolest whip tail in the fish room because if we come over here, in this tank, we have some of my royal whip tails. Now I picked these guys up as adults and you can see right there in the middle of the screen is one of our males. So he's a definite male. He's got bristles on the side of his nose, like you can see there. So you can see those bristles right there. And if you look up the back, there is a female. This girl has been getting a little bit bigger and I'm hoping that she's filling up with eggs. So these guys are royal whip tails. They're very, very cool fish. And I picked these guys up about a month and a half ago. So they haven't started to breed yet. Apparently these guys are very, very easy to breed, but the challenge with these guys is raising the fry. Apparently the fry are very difficult to raise and I'm sure that I'm gonna get a lot of comments on how difficult they are to raise. So it'll be fun to see how I go with those guys. I'll probably have to take them home and try and raise them at home so I can constantly feed them and things like that. But nonetheless, these guys are a really cool catfish. I've actually got three of them in here. So that might not even be the biggest female there. I think this female right here is the biggest one and you can see how plump she's getting. So in all of the tanks with whip tails, I've added these. So these are just pumps and they're just blowing water and making a lot of turbulence in the tanks. and this is so hopefully they're blowing uh, this way and then the males decide to breed here on the glass. So you can see we've got another one there and I only recently added these and this female started really plump up. So we'll see how this goes. My plan is to use these tanks also for some quarry grow outs. I'm not gonna fill it up with a crazy amount of them but apparently they can cohabitate really well together. So I'm gonna put a bunch of little baby quarries in here to grow out and it'll be another great way of utilizing tank space and these guys help keep the algae away and things like that. So. 
The whip tails are very, very cool. But these aren't the only whip tails that I have. These guys are pretty cool and I just picked these up recently, like about a week ago. And these guys are my twig catfish. So I've got five of them. They're about 16 centimeters. And these guys, I think, are nearly fully grown. So they're very similar looking to the long nose whip tail. In fact, they've got a bit of a longer nose. And these guys look even more like sturgeon in my opinion. But these are very, very cool. And they're in here with a ton of snails, which I'll probably have to remove because the snails compete for the food in this tank and they also add to the ammonia and things like that, which is very low because we've got some of this ambulia growing, which helps to keep the ammonia down. But they take away the food from these guys and they take away the food from some of the quarry grow outs in this tank, like you can see here. So I'll be sure to remove some of those snails, but we've got five of these guys. Of course, they've started to hide as I've come and brought the camera over, but there's another one here. And yeah, these guys have been pretty cool. I've enjoyed having them in here. I've only had them for a week, like I said, but they are really, really cool. I saw them at the local fish store and I just couldn't help myself but get them. And I'm not too sure how the breeding is gonna go. If you guys have any information on these guys, please leave a comment down below because there is not a lot of information on these guys on the internet. They've actually seemed to be a less of a popular fish in recent times. And I'm guessing it's probably because these guys are pretty freaky looking and a lot of the beginner hobbyists will not want to get something like this. They'll probably want to get something like an angelfish or something pretty, which I can understand. But for all the people who, you know, have been there and done that, these guys are pretty cool. Now this guy's hanging out with a little baby stir by Corey. But yeah, these are my long nose whip tails and I'm really excited to see how these guys go into the future. Now down the bottom of my fry system, I'm using this space to grow out a few things. So these guys aren't too crazy, but in here we have some super red bristle nose, some long fin albino bristle nose, and some long fin common bristle nose. And then in the other tank, we have the long fin lemon blue eyes, which I'm very excited to grow out and hopefully breed. These guys have been growing very, very quickly and they are so cool looking. They look like little mini dragons and I'm so excited to see what they look like when they get their bristles. And yeah, I mean, these guys have just been really cool to raise up. I think these guys look a lot cooler than the albino bristle nose, just because of that lovely yellow color. You can see right there, like the perfect dragon look that these guys have. They're just such a weird and wonderful fish. Now, excuse the glare in these dark tanks. Yes, I'm recording on my iPhone so everyone can see me. But uh, in these two tanks, we have some of these beautiful peppermints. Now, these guys are my peppermint bristle nose, and these are the breeders. Now, there's one tank with a bunch of them in here, and then there's another tank right next door with a trio. So there's actually been a pair in here, but I added a second female just in case this female decides to quit. But she has not been quitting at all, and I'm talking about breeding. So she's had seven spawns in a row in the past like three to four months. And this male is actually in the cave and he's fanning away on another batch of eggs. So these guys are on wrigglers and they've been producing just a mountain of peppermint bristle nose. I've been so lucky to get these guys really going and going quick. So there's these guys and then in the tank next door, are these guys have only just been recently added in the last month so we'll see in summer whether we get any more breeding hopefully we do i'm sure that we will get some more breeding but i'm growing out a few more for my production to hopefully breed in the next couple of years and yeah peppermint bristle nose are really really cool bristle nose and they've been a real fun one to breed i also threw out a few of the other tanks in the fish room like this ram breeding tank that you can see here i have some of these just normal blue-eyed lemon bristle nose that i'm growing out to hopefully breed in the future so there's probably like 10 or 20 of them in the fish room. I'm not too sure how many of them there are. And also, I think it's just worth mentioning, but I also have common and albino bristle nose that I'm producing in the fish room as well. So you can see there's a beautiful male there on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side is a female. Oh wait, that might actually be another little male there. But yeah, I've been making a ton of these guys, and I don't plan on stopping making these guys. They sell really well. I really can't produce enough of them in the fish room. So I guess now we're on to the fun side of the fish room. And now these guys are some of my favorite fish in the fish room. And these are some of my rarer L numbers. So in here, we have a colony of these beautiful L134 plecos. Now I picked these guys up as an adult colony and I actually picked up 14 of these guys. And I split the colonies into the best sexes that I could. And there's seven in each of these tanks. So this is the first tank with these guys. You can see I've got some massive adults in here. Now I've had these guys throughout winter and I obviously haven't had any breeding, but I have got some really big females. Like you can see up the back here, I've got another couple of them in these caves and they've been an absolute ball to keep. L134 is probably my second favorite pleco right after the L46, which is my favorite pleco. But yeah, I mean, I really hope to get some breeding out of these guys, hopefully throughout the summer when we get some storms and things like that. And yeah, apparently these guys are one of the harder ones to breed. A lot of people have difficulty breeding these for some reason, and hopefully I don't have that problem. Hopefully these guys do start to breed, but I also have a colony of eight juveniles growing out that should start breeding probably next summer. 
I've got lots of L134s in the fish room. These guys are my original L134s and they've been growing a ton. So I've got eight of these guys. I actually originally bought nine, but I lost one along the way when I was feeding bloodworms and it choked on bloodworms and died right at the start. So I stopped feeding bloodworms after that and that was very disappointing. But these guys should start spawning probably next summer. But yeah, they're in here with some of these Bosmani Rainbow Fishers dithers. And you can see these guys don't have as much color as those adults. And then down the end here, we also have this second colony of the adult breeders and there's seven of these guys in here as well. So these guys were breeding for the original owner and they were breeding throughout the summer and he sold them after the summer. So hopefully we do end up getting some kind of breeding. Like I was saying before, it'd be really cool to have some of these guys. They're in super high demand here in Australia. And the reason they're so rare is because they can't be imported into the country anymore, which is kind of disappointing. Nonetheless, they're a really, really cool fish. And yeah, like I said, they're probably my second favorite pleco in the fish room. Now these guys will probably start breeding as well next summer and these guys are a colony of six of these L201 plecos. So these guys are the, I think they're called the Orinoco Angel pleco. And these guys aren't the snowballs. The snowballs stay a little bit smaller than them, but these are very, very similar. And you can see they just look so cool. They've got this like polka dot pattern. And I think we definitely have males and females. Those, that one right there would probably be a male. And then we've got a few plump ones, which would probably be females. Now, if anyone was wondering and looking for a pleco that stays pretty small. These guys are probably your best bet. They stay very, very small and they don't get too big. And these guys are nearly at max size. So I'm excited to get these guys finally breeding, probably next year, like I said. They're in here with some of these green neon tetras, which are just some dither fish. And yeah, these guys, they're a bit more of a carnivorous one. So the L134s I was showing you before, they're actually moving driftwood, that's kind of crazy. The L134s I was showing you before, they're more of an omnivorous type of pleco. These guys are actually a high pancistrus, so they're more of a carnivorous pleco. So these guys don't get a lot of veg matter. I feed them some zucchini once a month just to you know, flush their guts out and get them some nutrition that they might not have. But for the most part, these guys eat a lot of you know, meaty foods like blood worms and mysis shrimp and you know, carnivore pellets and things like that. But these guys are super, super cool fish and I'm very excited for these guys to start breeding. And now we'll come on over to one of my favorite tanks in the fish room. And in here we have five of these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful L46 Zebra Plecos. I got these guys about a year ago, well, not actually a year ago, about eight months ago. And they've been growing terrifically. We've got a few big ones, we've got a few little ones. And these guys are definitely my favorite Pleco in the fish room. These guys probably won't start breeding till not next summer, but the summer after and I'm very excited to get these guys to finally breed. We've got five of them in this tank and we actually have a few more zebra plecos in the fish room. We've got a tank with another four, um, but those guys are a little bit smaller and I'll show you guys those in a second. But these guys, like I was saying, with the L201 snowballs that I was showing you before, these guys as well eat a pretty similar diet. These guys actually don't eat bloodworms because I don't think they're big enough yet to eat those bloodworms and I don't want them to choke on them or anything like that. But they do eat a lot of rapashi and um, carnivore pellets and from time to time they will have a little bit of zucchini and yeah these guys have just been really cool they've got a lot of personality they are always playing with each other and fighting over different space and they have not been difficult to take care of at all a lot of people think these guys just because of their price tag they're going to be difficult to take care of and they're definitely not hard to take care of at all you can see we've got this guy in the cave and there's actually a little guy up the back there that's hiding and yeah they're in here with these special caves these guys are a little bit of a flatter cave because they like being in between rocks so they're not going to start breeding for a bit so I just thought I'd make them a nice comfortable aquarium and then probably next year I'll change it up and put some really small caves and stuff like that in there but these guys are super cool and rare catfish and yeah um, these are definitely my favorite fish in the entire hobby and if we come over here to this other tank you can see we've got the other four in here so these guys yeah they're a little bit smaller but Nonetheless, they've been growing quite a bit. I picked these guys up at a 3.5 centimeter size and they definitely have grown since then. And at that size, they actually grow quite quickly up until like, like that 4.5 to 5 centimeter mark. And then that's when I've noticed their growth starts to slow down and they probably don't grow that much until they're at breeding size. So yeah, these guys are still pretty small. They'll probably start breeding actually at a pretty similar time to the other pair. They're only about six months younger. So yeah, and then here we have my colony of these beautiful tiger plecos. Now these guys are the L397s and you can see there's some algae wafers in the front here. I just fed these guys and these are so beautiful and these guys are really, really close to breeding. You can see they're starting to get some of those whiskers on the back of their tails and 
you know, they look really, really good as young uns, and I think they look really good as old, you know, plecos, but when they're young, they have a lot of vibrancy and they really look cool, but I think these guys still look pretty cool. Now, these guys are actually a panaculus pleco, and these guys actually eat a lot of wood. So you can see there's some wood in this tank, and these guys have really rasped that down and eaten pretty much all of it. And I think the term for a wood-eating fish is a xylivore. So yeah, these guys are pretty big. Here's my hand for reference. They get quite big and they're gonna do a lot of growing and turn into pretty big plecos, but hopefully we get some breeding soon. I think definitely in the summer, if I'm lucky, I will get a spawn from these guys, so yeah. And then the last plecos in my collection are these guys, and these guys are just some L270 chocolate zebra plecos. They're pretty similar to the L333s. They're not my favorite pleco, and I think they're pretty cool. I like these guys over the L333s, but I've got a colony of eight of them. I did originally have a colony of 10. I moved these guys to a new aquarium and in that aquarium there was just a ton of driftwood and I randomly lifted up a piece of driftwood one day and I found one dead. And I did lose one along the way so I'm not too sure how I lost it. But these guys have been pretty sturdy and I haven't lost one for a very long time. So hopefully I don't lose any more of these guys. Yeah, that was pretty annoying. But yeah, I've still got eight of them and they've been growing really big now and I'm sure that I probably won't lose another one until they start breeding. So these guys aren't too rare. Uh, a lot of people do have these here in Australia, but they are very cool. And I'm sorry that you're only gonna get to see the tails of these guys. They've been hiding in these caves and I don't get to see them very much myself either. So that's it for the plecos in the fish room. And I guess now we can start to have a look at some of the quarries in the fish room. So I don't have too much of an extensive quarry collection. I just have some of the common stuff. I did have some rare things, but I decided to move them on because there was just too many things going on in the fish room and I thought that I wouldn't have a good chance of breeding those because I wasn't giving them enough attention. So I just decided to stick with the common stuff and you guys didn't get to see what I stuck with. So in this first tank, we have some of these similar quarries, which are a pretty shy quarry. You can see we've got some little babies in here, which were eggs that were just missed in here. And these guys started to breed a couple of months ago and I've actually been producing quite a few of these guys. Now, now not nearly as many numbers as I have with other quarries, but Nonetheless, I've still been producing quite a few of them. You can see there's a beautiful little baby there. Now these guys are a pretty cool one. They've got that leopard pattern on them and then they've got that violet stripe up the back. So they're a pretty cool looking one. These guys are probably my second favorite in the fish room behind my gold lasers, which are also very, very cool. But these guys are my similar quarries. And then in the tank next door, we have some of these beautiful long fin panda quarries, which have been producing quite a lot of fish. I have some of these guys growing out. Now these guys don't breed as often as the normal panda quarries do, but they do breed probably once a week and I get 30 to 40 eggs out of this colony. So they're pretty cool. There's actually quite a few of these guys in this tank that have just been missed from being collected out as eggs and they've actually grown out and hatched out in here and they've grown up and they're actually starting to breed now. So that's pretty cool. But these guys are my long fin panda quarries. And then in here we have some trash in this tank. I don't know how that got in here. That's just from the bloodworms, um, so I have to get that out. But in here we have a random trilineatus quarry that I didn't know was in here. And we have some stirby quarries. So these guys have been breeding like every three days and I've got so many stirby quarries in the fish room, it's not even funny. But I think we've got two females and uh, four males in here or something like that. And these guys are a pretty common one. A lot of you guys have seen these before. Yeah, these guys aren't too crazy, but another one of the quarries in my collection. And then in here we have a prolific colony of these panda quarries. These guys produce like every two days and they produce so many eggs, it's not even funny. I've been making so many of these guys. They're a very, very easy quarry to breed. I'd say these guys are even easier than the albino quarries. They do spawn a little bit less than the albino quarries, but rearing the babies up is a lot easier than the albino quarries and they're very, very hardy and great beginner quarry in my opinion. So I've got some of these guys in here. And then in here we have some of these trilineatus quarries or these false juliars. Um, a lot of people call these guys the juliars and they look very similar, but they're definitely not juliars. Uh, they've got a little bit of a different pattern, but these guys don't produce as much as I'd like them to. They produce probably like 40 eggs every week or so. Sometimes they have a big spawn, but rearing these guys up is a little bit annoying because they do have smaller eggs than some of the other quarries in the fish room. Nonetheless, I'm still getting some production out of these guys, so they're gonna stay in the fish room until a little bit later on. Now this is definitely my favorite quarry tank in the whole entire fish room. And in here we have the gold laser quarry colony. Now, these guys had a spawn, it was about a week and a half ago, and I haven't had a spawn since, but the females are so fat. And there's a colony, I think of 11 or 10 of these guys. You can see the beautiful gold stripe. It's like a neon gold stripe along the side of these guys. 
and I think I do have some fry growing out. I just threw them in a random tank with some of the other eggs, so we'll have to wait and see. But I really hope that I can get another spawn out of these guys, and I'm sure I can. I added some sand into this tank, and I absolutely love sifting through it like you can see here. And I'm just hoping that with a couple more water changes and maybe a couple more power heads boosting the flow, I will get another spawn from them. But it was a pretty small spawn, and these guys are still growing out, and they're pretty young. So I think I probably won't have crazy production of these guys for another couple of months until they're a little bit bigger and breeding consistently like some of the other quarries in the fish room. But they're a very shy quarry. I didn't get to see these guys a lot before I added a ton of cover in this tank. And one thing that I didn't add into this tank that wasn't helping the breeding was some broadleaf plants. So I did add some of this Anubius coffeefolia and they straight away spawned on that. So if any of you guys are struggling to get these guys to breed, you definitely need to add broadleaf plants and they'll thank you for it later with uh, some eggs. So I added some broadleaf plants in here and I added some boosted flow and they spawned straight away. So I was really excited, but more videos about these guys coming out in the future. So uh, stay tuned for that. And then in the final catfish tank, uh, my colony of black Venezuelan quarries, which have actually had a spawn today. And you can see some of the eggs in and around the aquarium. They actually had so many eggs and I did collect most of the eggs out and I put them in this breeder box, but I mean, they lay so many that it's just sometimes a little bit annoying to get these guys out. And you can see you just leave the extra ones in here and they eat them up eventually. But they hang out at the back and you're not gonna get to see them too well because they're in a bit of a dark tank. But they're a really beautiful quarry when they're young, but as they get old, they start to look really weird and they look like big ugly catfish. But I'm super excited to have finally started to breed these. I actually haven't got any fry and their past few spawns haven't been viable. And I'm not too sure whether it was the raising of the eggs or something like that because I was raising them like I do my stir buys. So with this spawn, I have changed it up and I'm hoping that hopefully the eggs start to hatch and I can get some of these guys in some of my quarry grow out tanks. But we'll just have to wait and see. I'm sure these guys will spawn again and I'll get a few more chances and there's no rush with these guys. Um, I'd like to have some fry, but until I figure it out, uh, I'll just keep trying to trigger them and get eggs and hope that they figure it out. So that's all the catfish that I have in the fish room. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys found it interesting seeing all the different types of fish that I have in here. And I'll see you guys in the next one.